In this video, I'd like to start a discussion of what we mean when we say criticism, whether that's literary criticism or criticism of a media artifact or whatever. What do we mean when we talk about critical analysis and criticism? So initially, when we hear the word criticism, we may go to this kind of definition where we think about you know, expression of disapproval of someone who thinks we've done something wrong or have some sort of perceived faults and mistakes. We think about the teachers over the years who have come at us and said, no, that's wrong. Don't do it that way or whatever. That's criticism. That's that's one definition of criticism, but that's not the definition of criticism that we're talking about. We're not talking about discussing whether somebody's done something right or wrong or, or expressing approval or disapproval of something. We are talking about a different type of criticism. Specifically, we're talking about the analysis and judgment of the merits and faults of a literary or artistic work. Okay, so what we're doing here, you know, you may think, uh, and this is truly criticism in some sense, but you may think of somebody standing in front of a, a beautiful work of art in a museum or something. They're being critical of that, of that work of art. They're trying to understand uh, what it means. They're trying to understand what the good is here and what the bad is here. And, and so uh, we can do that not just with art, though. We can do that with all kinds of artifacts, literary, media artifacts, things happening in the real world. We can, we can uh, have a critical outlook and use criticism to define those things. One way we do that is through, you know, examining art in that way or, or examining some sort of media in that way. Another is through text analysis. We're reading literature. We're being, we're viewing it through a particular lens as we're going to talk about and, and analyzing the text of that. So there are a variety of ways that we can be critical consumers of these things and, and perform critical analysis. So uh, one broad way to describe this, as I, as I just mentioned, is thinking about it through the use of different lenses. I don't, I don't know if you know anything about photography. I really don't know anything about photography. But my wife is a photographer and she has all these different lenses and she's always when she's taking pictures she's swapping out the lenses to to get different perspectives on things right some are as you see here wide angle and some are telephoto for distance shots and things so we can use this kind of analogy from different lenses in photography we can view different artifacts through different lenses okay and we can provide different perspective one way i think of it too is I happen to be colorblind. So you may have heard about these colorblindness glasses that people can see and, and, and they take you from these real kind of dull colors or whatever colors you're normally seeing, which would be normal for me into viewing what other people are seeing and around the world and the different colors that they're actually, you know, seeing that the, the real colors, real time colors, but provides a different perspective. And we see things through these different lenses. Uh, maybe a more contemporary example would be even the use of filters, for example, in, in Snapchat, for example, or uh, another uh, Instagram or, or something like that. They use those kinds of filters where they provide just a slightly different coloring, slightly different perspective of that thing, except instead of you know looking at different pictures necessarily and providing different filters in that way, we're going to be viewing different artifacts through different lenses and asking ourselves questions instead of literal lenses. We're going to use questions as to how we examine these artifacts and how we look at them. Right. And so these different lenses are going to provide us with different perspectives. And so we'll take a look at a few of these over the course of this series and, and look at some different lenses. But examples are, um, for example, you know, Marxist criticism or, or what's referred to sometimes as the Frankfurt School, where people are looking at different class designations nations and things as they look at an artifact they're looking at it through the lens of how is this impacted by class what perspective does this represent in terms of class another type of school or, or, or uh, critical uh, analysis that we can use is psychoanalytic we're looking at the psychology of a person and trying to understand that aspect of things. We can also look at feminist and gender studies and try and view it through the, the lens of that particular, uh, that particular gender, that particular genre. The same with ethnic and race studies. We can try and view things for how does this, how was this written from a perspective of a particular ethnicity or race, or how does this impact somebody reading this in, in, in a particular ethnicity or race, those types of things. So, uh, these are all different lenses that we can put on to view particular artifacts. So there is a process to criticism and just it, it, in the vaguest sense here, in the most basic sense, let me just run through the different types of, of steps involved in the criticism process. First of all, is to read or to examine that artifact. If it's a literary process, then, then you're going to be reading it. If it's a piece of media, then you're going to be examining it, watching it, reviewing it uh, multiple times and, and looking at it. If it's a piece of art, you're going to be looking at it multiple times, spend time examining it really, really, thoroughly um, uh, taking it in. 
really in a true sense, taking it in. Uh, so whether it's reading, whether it's watching, whether it's looking at these things, that's the first step of the criticism process is to really engage with that artifact and truly try and understand it. Then we come up with a thesis. We come up with the idea of what is it that we're, we think we want to say about this? What, what does this mean to us? How do we want to approach this? So we, we write our thesis, we come up with our thesis, then we do our research. Based around that thesis, we've come up with this idea that we're researching. So we go out and find what material there is to find about it. We do our research on the, on the author of that piece and, and of the, or the, you know, the creator of that piece. We do the, um, what was going on at the time, understanding the larger context, understanding the smaller context of who was that person and what might they be trying to, to indicate with this. And, and, and then also understanding what is this critical theory that we're using to, to examine it? What, what lens are we using? And let's understand that as well. The different perspectives involved in that and the different questions that are related to that. So lots of research involved here. Then we come in with our support. We have our thesis, we have our main idea. Then we come in with supporting materials, supporting details and, and try and prop that up, right? If we're going to have a stool, you can't have a stool with two legs. It's not very comfortable, right? Wouldn't be very practical. So you need the, all the legs on that stool. And that's what we need with supporting ideas. We need all the different supporting ideas to, to support our thesis and to support, you know, what we're finding here. And then finally, if, if we're going to present this information to other people, we need to edit it thoroughly so that it can be taken seriously. That's a big part of this as well. We need to, to be sure our writing is on point and, and, and uh, expressing what it is it needs to. Some of the common questions you may come across as we're, as we're engaging in uh, critical theory and critical examination, critical analysis of different things. Um, some common questions we, we may ask as part of this process. First, who created this artifact? Who was it that created this? That'll tell us a lot about, about the intention and about a lot of other things, but we need to know about that person. If we're examining a book, we need to know who wrote this book, not just by name, but what was their perspective? What was their experience in life? You know, what was going into this in their mind when they created this? So we need to know who created this artifact. We need to know why it was created. What compelled this person to, to create this work, to write this book, to create this piece of art, to create this piece of media. Uh, why was it created? What's the purpose do we think for the, uh, from, from the audit, from the author's perspective, the creator's perspective, right? why was it created? Next, what's the theme here? Um, what's the overarching theme here? What's their purpose? What's their intention here? And then finally, what are we supposed to learn from this? What do we think the creator was trying to, to do with this? What's their end goal here? A few things to keep in mind as we're, as we're examining things critically and, and engaging in critical analysis. First, we have to be able to separate the personal from the critical. We can't get, uh, you know, too emotionally or personally involved in, in these, uh, these types of things. Um, we have to maintain some separation from that item so we can look at it as objectively as possible. Now, now pure objectivity is not really possible, but as much as possible, we want to separate ourselves from whether or not we like this, this song or this, this movie or this TV show or this book, whether we like it personally is not as relevant as what this person, again, go back to those questions. What's this person trying to say? Who created it? So forth. We need to separate our personal feelings um, from this piece of, uh, from this artifact and this piece of work from the critical aspects and, and the criticism of this. So, so we need to be able to separate those things. We also want to look for depth. We want to go deep here. This is not, this is not the time to be, you know, a mile wide and an inch deep and just get to the surface level information. This is time to dig in. This is time to get to know this creator. This is time to, to get to know this piece. What's the background here? When was it created in what, you know, what aspects? So we, we need to dig deep into some of these areas. This is the time to do a deep dive into, into the different aspects of this artifact. And then we also need to think on all of these axes. Right? Not axes like, like hatchets, but axes as in different aspects of this thing. We need to, we need to come at it from a lots of different perspectives and think about this from all different axes, right? So this may be something you've seen before. This is kind of one of those optical illusion type things, but, but there's two pictures here, right? You know, some of you, when you look at this, you're seeing the young woman kind of looking away into the distance, right? Some of you when see, when you see it, you're seeing what you would describe as an older woman in like a big fur coat and you're just seeing her face. And, uh, and you know, so there's actually two images here and that's, that's the whole point. This is one of those dual images, but we, and we need to be able to see all of these. We need to be able to see all the different perspectives as they relate here. Again, separating ourselves personally from what we think about this, this artifact, we need to be able to think across all of these different axes, right? And think about it from all of the different perspectives. 
in the end, criticism involves a great deal of thought and a great deal of analysis. And uh, so, so first we're posed with these questions. We pose these questions and then we, we think about them. We, we let them kind of, uh, kind of uh, ferment in our mind and we think about what does this mean? And we dig deep and then we come to conclusions. And, and to be clear, we're not coming to facts about these things. We're, we're still coming to as objective an opinion we can get as, as we can get, but still it's an opinion about what this, what this art means, what this piece means, what the meaning behind this is and what the intention behind it is. But we're, we're, we're thinking about these things. We're examining things critically through different lenses and how they may affect or appeal to, to people in different, uh, different genres and mindsets and things. So critical analysis really is about that kind of deep thought and that deep dive into getting behind um, what's behind this particular artifact and what's behind the person who created it and so forth. And really trying to understand uh, things on a deeper level in that regard and understand them through the different lenses provided by these different perspectives that we will talk about. So in the future, we'll be talking about these different types of uh, schools of thought and different perspectives and how we apply them through critical analysis. But hopefully this has given you an overview of what we mean when we say criticism or critical analysis. If you have any questions about critical analysis, about criticism, about anything that we're going to be talking about here, please feel free to email me. I'm always happy to respond to email. Otherwise, uh, begin the process of wrapping your mind around what it means to be, uh, to, to conduct critical analysis and to, to be kind of a critical consumer of these things and start to put yourself in the mindset of, of being able to see things from those different perspectives. And we'll look forward to exploring each of these areas with you even more in the future.